All right, so in today's video, I'm going to discuss a recent trade uh, that was initially uh, driven by a news uh, catalyst, uh, then confirmed by a sequence of other blocks and, and other uh, price action patterns acting as a technical catalyst. So if we take a look at this one minute static chart here, the first thing that stands out is obviously this period of, of accumulation followed by a sell rate pattern. Uh, then we see this news driven uh, 70 point spike. I think that at this point uh, it's important to be patient and observe how the price uh, reacts to this sudden demand surge because the thing is uh, when we have such a sharp shift in, in market momentum, often uh, what, what this uh, sort of pattern does is that it signals an imbalance in buying or selling pressure, especially after a prolonged period of sideways movement or, or lack of clear direction on the part of the market. Additionally, with this much momentum, anything can happen. The market uh, can either consolidate briefly before continuing higher or, or reverse sharply, uh, leading to a significant uh, pullback towards support. In other words, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, that's why it's, it's always important to allow the market uh, to move according to its directional uh, bias. And that means uh, let the price action form structure first, and then uh, once it does that, it will start revealing new levels to you. Uh, this approach, I think, will help you identify major areas of interest and determine at the same time uh, which levels in the market uh, are tradable. Uh, so the first thing we notice here after, after the spike is the formation of this, of this bullish block trade or, or, or the block, uh, which is essentially uh, the same concept under, under different names. Uh, based on this pattern, uh, the market um, the market seems, at least in the short term, the market seems to be gravitating towards the demand side liquidity here. Uh, now, this bias, in my view, uh, is further reinforced by, by the sequence of these order blocks forming in this in this area. Uh, now, for those of you new to trading, uh, when block uh, when block orders, uh, which are uh, which are obviously a, a market making manipulation tactic. And often appear uh, before before an actual distribution event. Uh, so when block orders, especially uh, when they form sequentially uh, in a concentrated area, uh, it suggests that that there is uh, there is recurring interest in that particular price zone by institutional traders and and market makers. Uh, such a concentration also increases the likelihood of, of support and resistance levels forming uh, forming in the targeted area. Another thing to keep in mind here is that recognizing such sequence, uh, which which could very well be iceberg orders. And by iceberg orders, what I'm referring to is uh, when, when deep pockets or, or big institutional traders uh, want to buy or sell large amounts of, of securities, what they do is they, they often use what's known as an iceberg order. Uh, now, these large orders, just like regular uh, block orders, are, are split into, into smaller parts uh, with some parts visible on the order book and, and, and others hidden. Uh, the idea behind iceberg orders, which, which are executed by, by block houses, uh, that are basically departments within Wall Street's top uh, brokerage firms that, that specialize, obviously, in breaking up size or large orders. So the idea behind iceberg orders is to, uh, to avoid causing a stir or panic, a panic in the market by placing uh, one, one massive order. Uh, by breaking it up, these big traders can, uh, can, uh, can get better prices and execute their trades without actually uh, disrupting uh, the market too much. But you know, that's, uh, that's a, a different topic anyway, I just, uh, I just mentioned it as an FYI. So this sequence of order blocks, and, and we have got a total of 1, 2, 3, 4 here, as, as you can see, especially this one that, that forms after a quick reaccumulation segment, uh, can be useful uh, in determining uh, the market's order flow from this point uh, forward, uh, which currently remains bullish. However, uh, we still don't have the full, uh, the full picture here, assuming uh, the upper part of the chart hasn't yet uh, developed a, a full structure. So uh, what, what I'm trying to say is that it's uncertain whether this order block uh, sustained uptrend will transition into a distribution phase followed uh, by a markdown uh, phase completing this way uh, the Wyckoff cycle. 
or if it will serve as a base uh, for the market's next leg higher. Obviously, the tendency uh, remains higher given that after briefly reversing from uh, from a new high uh, below 400, uh, the price begins to head lower but finds support at the 350 level before uh, shifting higher, confirming uh, that the trend is upward. And now, how do we know that this is a confirmed uptrend? Uh, well, we know by observing the price as it briefly dips into this accumulation zone uh, before breaking back above it and forming, as it breaks out, another sequence of order blocks. Uh, now, here is another important factor uh, that, that could obviously invalidate the uptrend thesis. Had the market uh, or the price broken below this channel's support, uh, we would have seen a shift from the distribution phase to the markdown phase, completing this way uh, the Wyckoff cycle I mentioned earlier. At the same time, uh, this new high up here uh, would have uh, qualified as a UTAD or up thrust after distribution, making, uh, making this, whole, this whole structure a classic Wyckoff model. Uh, so, uh, coming back, to, uh, so coming back to, to this breakout area at the 400 level, it's clear that, that the order flow remains bullish. Uh, in fact, the entire trading activity from, uh, from the first order block up to this point uh, shows all the signs of a, of a classic uh, bullish continuation pattern, uh, especially, especially this mini support level which aligns uh, with the base of this bullish order block. Uh, so this support level uh, indicates rising demand as it invalidates this bearish order block. Overall, uh, this price action uh, marks, in my view, a, a, a consolidation within an uptrend and the breakout above the 400 level uh, signals a continuation of that uptrend. Uh, that said, guys, it's important uh, to note that after a 300-point run of the market uh, feels a bit overextended, uh, since up to this point there hasn't been any significant pullback. In other words, the trend is accelerating, which is, which is obviously exactly uh, what, we, what we want to see, uh, but at the same time, uh, we need to see a decent pullback here uh, for that, for that uh, relief trade uh, to confirm itself. And the opportunity presents itself with this 50-point with this relief rally, which based on the one-minute uh, time frame uh, now gives us the context we need uh, to anticipate the next move. And the next move is straightforward. Once the price, and let me just transition uh, real quick here from this static uh, chart. So once the price uh, rebalances this imbalance zone, any move above it uh, triggers a long entry. The question is obviously why? Uh, well, once the price moves through this resistance level, which now becomes a flip zone, and as a result, uh, the last point of support or LPS, uh, the market's tendency uh, is to establish higher lows before surging, uh, before surging upward. Uh, it's important to note that the last point of, of support, uh, particularly after a secondary test like, like this one, uh, plays a crucial role. Uh, keep in mind that the secondary test, uh, sometimes referred to as an equal low, same concept, just a different name. Uh, so the secondary test not only checks whether uh, the downtrend is truly over, but also indicates uh, that, that market makers and other large players have begun accumulating. When this secondary test reverts into a bounce or rally, uh, it often signals a sign of strength or SOS. An SOS not only indicates strong demand and, and quick absorption of supply, but also suggests a, a low uh, resistance liquidity run where, where, uh, where the price can rise rapidly with minimal opposition. And that's my key signal right here, confirming that that the market is about to shift from an accumulation phase uh, to a more bullish trend. Uh, that's why I placed my, my second profit target 125 points higher from the first contract. Uh, obviously, uh, this trade uh, worked out really, really well. At the same time, I think that in trading, guys, it's important uh, to like take a reflective, uh, reflective approach and carefully uh, think uh, things through uh, before actually pulling, pulling the trigger. Uh, being deliberate and, and measured uh, in your entries can clearly uh, make, make all, all the difference if your, if your strategy is, is approached in, in the right way. In other words, uh, you might just 
uh, find uh, that edge that you have been uh, looking for in the market. Uh, and guys, if you found this trade analysis useful and, and want to see more examples uh, like, like this, don't forget to check out this next video. All right, gang, thanks for watching. And as always, hope to catch you all in the next one.